Hello, I'm Carla Schroer of Cultural Heritage Imaging. I co-founded CHI 15 years ago, and now I serve as a director and trainer. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how we collect images to create 3D models using photogrammetry. We're gonna cover the key principles and core basics for image collection. So the goal of photogrammetry is that we wanna create a digital surface, a 3D surface that replicates the actual subject in both shape and color as close as we can. And when we're creating these photographic image sequences, we wanna make sure that the data we're collecting, if we have a scientific goal, is that the data can be qualitatively evaluated, that the data can be reused by others, and that we're thinking about archiving and how the data can be preserved for future generations. So here's the basic equipment that you need. And you need a digital camera, ideally a digital SLR, because we want to control all of the settings. You need a wide angle lens, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. A monopod is super helpful, just so that you can put the camera in different positions, up high, down low, uh, to get in, in all the different camera positions that you need. And then the third thing that's super helpful is to have calibrated uh, scale bars, a way to set real world scale in your project. So what we're gonna talk about here is how to collect that set of images or that image capture network. And the idea is that the design of that network is going to give us good data that can be used in any photogrammetric software system. So this is independent of the software that you're gonna use. It follows the core principles of photogrammetry and that means the data can be reused by others today or also reused in the future. One of the key things that's necessary is to have good redundancy. And having redundant look angles, different places where we look at the same part of the subject is key to getting really good measurable data. And this is just central to good scientific measurement systems. We need to take multiple measurements in order to know that we have a good measurement. And so in photogrammetry, we're looking at the number of different look angles on a given part of the imaging subject is what's going to give us that redundancy. So the design of our photogrammetric sensor network is that uh, we want to be able to move the camera to different positions. That's what defines the sensor network and that a well-designed network that, that covers everything the way we need is gonna be a prerequisite for getting good measurement. So here's what you have to have. In order to get good geometry, you need to have good base to distance or height, and the, what we mean by that is the distance between photos, more on that in a minute. We need good overlap of the photos, and our recommendation is 66% or two-thirds overlap. And we want to have multiple look angles at every point on the surface that we're collecting. So here is an illustration of the base to distance. So the base is how far we move the camera. The distance is how far away we are from the subject. And so you can see here that if we have a one-to-one -one ratio of the distance we move the camera, or the base, to the distance we are from the subject, the distance, that that gives us a really low area of depth uncertainty. There are very few places that the point in space can, can land. If we have a greater ratio of the uh, base, how far we move the camera, to the distance from the subject, that increases the depth uncertainty. So there's many more potential places that that point could fall on the surface. So our focal length that we choose for photogrammetry is the thing that really determines what our base to distance is going to be. If, let's say, we have a 14 millimeter lens, then we have a very wide angle. And uh, if we're using a 24 millimeter lens, we have uh, you know, a still wide angle, but not as quite wide. It's 74 degrees as the horizontal field of view. Here's a 35, a 50 millimeter, and a 100 millimeter by comparison. OK. so. For photogrammetry, we're going to look at this example with a 24 millimeter lens. And as you recall, we want to have a two thirds or 66% overlap. And that means that we're going to move the camera by one third of the field of view in order to get a two thirds overlap. So when we do that, we have a 
base to height ratio or base to distance ratio of one to two using a 24 millimeter lens because how far we move the camera versus the distance. It's a ratio. It doesn't matter how far we are from the subject. That ratio will always be the same. By contrast, if we use a 50 millimeter lens, then when we move a third, we're not moving the camera as far to get that two thirds overlap, one third translation, two thirds overlap. And so we have a one to four base to distance ratio in that case. So we have more depth uncertainty when we use longer lenses. So that's why we recommend using wide angle lenses. The other things that we need to do is pay attention to our camera settings. We need to lock down the focus. We need to be in a manual focus mode. And we recommend in the end tape, taping the focus ring so that if you bump it, it's not going to move. You want to not change the focal length as well. So the best way to do that is to use a prime lens or a lens with a single focal length. Or if you have to use a zoom lens, then choose one end or the other of the zoom and tape the focal ring so that it doesn't shift. We also want to lock down the aperture. And so uh, we can use manual mode on the camera, which will do that, or we can use aperture priority, which allows you to set the aperture and the uh, camera will choose, will choose the shutter speed. Uh, so it's okay to change the shutter speed. But we also want to choose an aperture that's good for high sharpness. We don't want to go too far, uh, too small of an ap aperture, uh, because due to diffraction effects, we will get, uh, we will lose sharpness. So this, what the best sharpness is varies by lens, but for most uh, lenses for 35 millimeter cameras, it's somewhere between, uh, uh, you want to stay between like f5.6 and f11, and the sharpest point is probably around f7.1. You want to keep your ISO low because you don't want noise in the images, and this is really important. Uh, so how high you can go with ISO is really a function of the sensor of your camera and how much noise starts to be produced at higher ISO. And as we just discussed, we want to use a wide angle lens. We stay between 18 to 50 millimeters in general. In terms of illumination, we want even consistent illumination. And I'm going to hit this point several times. We need redundant subject, subject capture. So again, we want to follow that 66% overlapping rule. And we're going to take multiple rows of overlapping images at different heights. An example I'm going to show you uses three rows, and that's going to give us nine look angles at every point on the surface. So here's an example. Here's our area of interest, and we have scale bars around it. We need to think of our scale bars as part of our area of interest because we want good multiple look angles or redundancy on our scale bars as well. So we take our first picture, two thirds off to the left of our subject. And here you can see the camera is in landscape mode and we're starting two thirds off the subject. Then we translate the cam camera one third. So we have a two thirds overlap. And now with the second image, you can see that there is uh, the first third of the subject now has two different cameras from geometrically different positions that look at that location. Then when we take the third image, now part of our area of interest has three look angles, but part of it only has two. So we complete our row, however many shots it is, taking two thirds overlapping images until we're two thirds past the edge of our area of interest. And what that means is that all of our area of interest, including our scale bars, has three overlapping images for that row. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna rotate our camera 90 degrees. And then we raise the camera up, so we're in a in geometrically different position, higher up, and we take two-thirds overlapping images across the subject again, starting two-thirds off the subject. Now this time we won't be moving the camera as far because when we're in portrait mode, we, uh, we don't have as wide of an angle in each view. After we complete that row, then we want to turn the camera 90 degrees the other way, or 270 degrees from our zero position, and we take another sequence. This time we uh, move the camera lower, and we take uh, these pictures again with a two-thirds overlap. So when we're done, here's what our sensor network looks like. We have landscape, 90 and 270 images. They're all overlapping and they're all looking at the same area. So we have nine look angles on everything in this area. 
The other thing that we do is when we raise the camera up to do our 90 degree row, um, we tilt the camera back down slightly, uh, like no more than 10 degrees. And same thing when we go below, we turn, tilt the camera up slightly, no more than 10 degrees. And this guarantees that we have good coverage, nine look angles everywhere in our area of interest. And that each of those nine look angles is from a different position. And why we rotate the camera is so that we can, in the software, it can get a good model of how light is transported through the lens. And that's called the camera calibration. And the camera calibration is really important to getting a good repeatable result. And so by moving the camera in this way, we give the software good data to get a very high quality camera calibration. So when we're done, this is what our sensor network looks like for this small area. So this is a fairly simple example, but it gives a really core, important, basic set of information. Look for other videos where we talk about more complex subjects and how to bring this together in those kinds of environments. So in summary, the key rules for getting good capture of photogrammetric data are we use wide angle lenses, we use 66% or two thirds overlap in how we move the camera, we lock the camera down, uh, and have in either manual in, in manual focus, we use prime lenses, or if we're using a zoom, we tape it. We use manual or AV mode so that our, our uh, aperture doesn't change, and we also want to make sure we have a low noise result. And super important, we want to get nine look angles on every part of our surface, and that's going to give us a really great measurable, reproducible result. Thank you.